and over the years, we, especially after the rains, uh, the, the soil is washed off from the, the top of these pottery vessels. Um, the different sizes, shades, and colors. Okay, so these are all from different uh, individ individual vessels. Uh, most of this, though, uh, will come from the time period between 6 to 850 AD which is in terms of Maya archaeology is classified as the classic period but that's the time of the fluorescence of the Maya era also found around here is obsidian this is a volcanic glass that the Mayas would have traded from the highlands of Guatemala and in some cases from Mexico and they would have used this in ritual uh, sacrifices. Uh, this is not very common to find, especially a piece this big. Uh, but again, being that we're at the right at the front of where looting took place years ago, this is kind of sometimes the stuff that you will find. All of this, though, although it's just laying around, it's always it's it's illegal to to possess any of these items, no matter how small or how common they are. Uh, we, no one should really possess any of these. So uh, whatever you see I am holding here, I will put, put it back where I find it. And, and I always tell our visiting guests, local and foreign, not to take anything. First, because it's illegal, and second, because you will be haunted by the spirits of the Maya, which I think is what I'm really we're worried about. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it back where I found it, which is over here. Okay. So here's another piece. Big one. Look at this. I just, just literally just found this piece. And these two I don't remember where I put the next one, but these two together, these are big flakes of obsidian actually. So I should probably hide these a little bit more so that no one is tempted to take them away. So I'm just going to put them in a little crevice here where people are going to find have trouble finding it. here at the actually one of the smallest structures or temples we have on the main plaza uh, but probably one of the most important because of this slab of stone right next to me this is a stella and it is one of many that are located on the main plaza most of them are really just broken and lying laying around so in all the archaeologists think that there were at least 12 Stelle located on this main plaza at some some point. Uh, this is one of the few that is has remained standing, uh, and the only one that has been uh, that which they have deciphered uh, glyphs from, or at least some some of the glyphs, uh, because most of it has been eroded. But uh, 20 years ago almost 20 years ago, they, they deciphered the name, the name of the, of the ruler that erected or commissioned this stella to be erected and more importantly the date on which the, the stella was placed here. So the, according to the archaeologists from Boston University, uh, the, the name of the ruler is Ukai and the date for this stella is uh, November 30, 780 AD. Okay, so that falls within that time period when it was uh, the, the glory time of the Maya, and just a hundred years later, actually, uh, the site was abandoned, just like most of the sites within within the Maya area. 
and this one is the only structure in the entire site that has been uh, reconstructed to some degree. A stella here at the back and it is typical for a stella that should just to have glyphs or writing on the front uh, sometimes occurred on the sides and even at the back and that is what you're looking at here your three glyphs I don't know what they are what they mean but they're very clearly visible and actually the further you are away from the cliff the, the better you are able to, to notice the design on the glyph itself. You know, really to, to know what a glyph means you really have to be an, a Maya epigrapher. It's not like you, you know, even if you're a Maya today you, you can't really read Mayan glyphs. It's not something that it happens like the, the way we go to school today. So it takes many years of, of study and practice to be able to do this. So that's my excuse for not knowing what they are. <laughs> here at not just the buildings but really all of the, the, the plazas that, that you walk in and amongst they have to be cleaned and cleared every year all right the forest is always trying to clean clean back its its territory so it's it's part of our job here to, to maintain the, the plazas and the buildings and what we have to do particularly with this structure here since it's the one that most people uh, will stand in front of and take pictures and want to climb up we have to make sure that we always keep this one cleared of brush uh, and that's why this is the one that looks the cleanest because it was just done two days ago but really we spend about two months every year under brushing the entire site which is four plazas and a few trails so it's a lot of work and it's also a dangerous work because in most areas you cannot we do not use any machines here so it's all done by hand machetes and in some areas where there's too many rocks you have to use your hand and there are lots of snakes here so that's really the main concern but fortunately no one has ever been, been bit like they say, you hit on wood and hopefully no one will get hurt, okay?